Hello dear learner. I Mr. Sri Krishna Bhavkar from Delonic Society's Baramati College of Pharmacy, Baranpur, Baramati. Welcomes you in the session of Introduction to Heat Transfer. In this learning dialogue, here I am going to cover Conduction, Convection and Radiation. Learning outcomes of today's session is after completion of this topic, student should able to study the modes of heat transfer. So here is transfer of heat. As heat transfer is, heat transfers from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. As we know that heat is the energy that makes molecule moves. Molecules with more heat energy moves faster and molecules with less heat energy moves slower. We also know that as molecules heat up and moves faster, they spread apart and objects get expanded. That means object get bigger. This phenomena is called as the thermal expansion. As we know that heat is always moving, if you have two objects or substances that are different temperatures, heat will always move out of the warmer object or substance and into the cooler object or substance. This heat transfer will continue until the objects are at the same temperature. Now, here I am giving few examples of heat transfers from our day to day life such as cooking, then drying clothes under the sun, boiling water on the stove, boiling water using electric kettle and ironing. Now modes of heat transfer, actually there are three different types of modes which are involved in the heat transfer. That means mechanism of heat transfer will be achieved by the three different modes such as conduction, convection and radiation. So how exactly does heat moves out of one thing and into another thing? This is called as heat transfer. Heat can be transferred or moves in three ways. Conduction, convection and radiation. As you know about the three different types of heat transfer, so pay attention to what the heat is moving through. That is from solid, liquid and gases or from empty spaces. Then how the heat is being transferred by touching by currents or by waves these are the most important factors while studying the heat transfer so after considering all these factor here i am going to start the first point that is the conduction in the last weekend i went to the beach i was walking barefoot on the soft and cool grass but when I got to the sand, I noticed that my feet were burning. This is an example of conduction. Now think of rows of dominoes that are all line up. When you push the first domino, it bumps into the second one, which bumps into the third one and all the waves down the line. Heat conduction is exactly like the dominoes. Now imagine that you have to place one end of the metal pole into a fire. The molecule on the fire end will get hot. Each hot molecule will pass the heat along to the molecule next to it which will pass the heat 
along to the next molecule and so on before you know that or before you know it the heat has traveled all the way along the metal pole until it reaches to your hand some materials are better conductors than others that's because some materials are able to pass that is conduct heat more easily metals are the great conductors that's why metal objects get hot so easily plastic and wood are poor conductors they will still get hot but it takes a lot longer for them to pass the heat from molecule to molecule likewise solids are the better conductors than the liquids or the gases that's because solids have molecule that are very tightly packed together so it's much easier for the molecule to pass the heat along the molecule in liquid and gases are spread further apart so they are not touching as much it takes longer for liquid and gases to conduct the heat so while studying the conduction actually conduction is a property which is studied for the solid particles and in this solid particle the conduction will achieve by the transfer of vibrational energy this transfer of vibrational energy occurs via collision between atoms and molecules into the substances and the subsequent transfer of the kinetic energy for example cooking on electric stove or hot plate for better understanding let us see this figure two substances at different temperatures separated by a barrier which is subsequently get removed here is the red section which is a which contains hot atoms and here is a blue section which contains cold atom and in between these two section there is a barrier and we have to remove that barrier by the application of heat and this will get removed by the conduction principle now in this conduction when the barrier is removed fast or hot atoms collides with slow or cold ones faster atom loses some speed and slower one gains speed fast one transfer some of their kinetic energy to the slower slower ones this transfer of kinetic energy from the hot to the cold side is called a flow of heat through the conduction now there are many examples of heat conduction any time two objects when touches heat conduction will happen touching a hot iron is an example of conduction the heat passes out of the iron and into your hand so is holding an ice cube <clears throat> the heat is conducted out of your hand and into the ice cube that's why your hand feels cold now materials with high thermal conductivity is called as conductors for example copper is a good conductor and materials with lower thermal conductivity is term as insulator for example concrete in this conduction cooking food on the stove is an one of the example of conduction which happening twice the heat from the burner passes into the metal pan and the and then the heat from the metal pan passes into the food and food gets heating it up now second point is the convection in this convection convection is how heat passes through the fluid actually convection study is considered for the fluids and as we know that fluids contains liquid and gaseous materials a fluid is anything that has loosely moving molecules that can move easily from one place to the another 
liquids and gases are considered as the fluids one important property of fluid is that they rise when heated that's because the molecule spreads out and moves apart when they get hot the hot fluid becomes less dense and rise up while cooler fluid is less dense and so it sinks down this up and down motion creates wo creates what are called convection current this convection current are circular movement of heated fluids which helps to spread the heat here is an example last night i heated up soup for dinner at first the soup was cold in the pan the soup at bottom of the pan was closest to the hot stove burner am i right then so the soup at the bottom heated up first as it heated the molecules spread apart and become and became less dense so the heated soup rose up to the top as the hot soup rose up the cooler soup at the top sank down to the bottom when it was at the bottom it was closest to the heat so that soup got hot and rose up as the soup continued heating the hot soup rose and the cold soup sank if you were to look closely you would see the soup moving up and down in the pot the up and down movement was a convection current the convection current helped to spread the heat around until all the soup was heated up in this convection the movement in natural convection is caused by the buoyancy forces induced by the variation in the densities of the fluid due to the temperature difference for example boiling water hot water at the bottom rises due to the buoyancy effect dense cold water at the top falls down a current is created in forced convection there is a use of there is pipe is used convection current in this convection current this current is used to explain why the air is hotter at the top of room and cooler at the bottom convection current also explains why water is warmer at the top of the ocean but gets colder as you swim deeper one natural example of conventional current is wind as the sun shines down on the area of land it heats the air above the ground that warm air rises as it rises cooler air moves into take the place at the bottom this moving cooler air creates wind wind happens all over over earth because earth heat unevenly there are always colder part and the warmer parts the wind blows from the cooler part of earth to the warmer part other example of convention uh, convention are boiling a pot of water on the gas or stove using a hot radiator to warm the air in a room and using heated air to make a hot air balloon rise up the sky rise up into the sky then the here is the third point that is the radiation so we have learned that conduction moves heat easiest those solids and convection moves heat through the liquids and gases so how does the heat from the sun get to the earth there are no molecules in space and how do you feel the heat from campfire even if you were sitting several feet away the answer is radiation 
रेडिएशन इज हाउ हीट मूव थ्रू प्लेस वेर देर आर नो मोलिक्यूल्स रेडिएशन इज एक्चुअली अ फॉर्म ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक एनर्जी रिमेंबर वी लर्न दैट इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक एनर्जी मूव इन वेवस वेल रेडिएशन इज हीट मूविंग इन वेवस रेडिएशन डज नॉट नीड मोलिक्यूल्स टू पास द एनर्जी एलॉन्ग All object radiates heat but some radiates much more heat than the others the biggest source of radiation is the sun it sends a huge amount of heat to the earth through electromagnetic waves light bulb radiates heat try it hold your hand a few inches away from a light bulb you can feel the heat right in fact a good way to remember radiation is that it is how you can feel heat without touching it heat passes through the empty space until it reaches your hand that's called radiation a fire is another example of radiation even you yes you are an example of radiation your body gives off heat that's why a classroom gets warmer when there are a lots of people sitting in it so this is all about the conduction convection and radiation and here is the references which i have referred for the preparation of this slide and here is here i would like to say thanks to my college delonic societies baramati college of pharmacy and my university dr baba saheb ambedkar technological university for making available this platform platform for us thank you thank you 